Hi, this is Tammy. Welcome back to my channel. This is Tammy's Crafty Life. Um, today is a bit of a different kind of a video. Usually my videos are about cross stitch, but this one is going to be a tutorial on um, how I make counting pins or decorative pins or uh, I also used to make these for glue toppers when I did paper crafting. So um, what you see here is some of the things that I'll be showing you how to make. Um, so I have three different kinds of stick pins and or counting pins and I'll be showing you how I make each one of those and I'll list below where I get the pins. The beads come from all different places. I've had them, they're just from my stash and I've had them for years. And um, then these down here are what I what are actually a paper piercing tool but people call them a pokey tool so I'll be showing you on the video I'll show how this one is made and they're all made the same way um, I think that's it so thank you so much for watching I'm glad you're here I hope you like what you see and that uh, you'll come back and if you're new welcome if you're returning thank you so much for returning I really appreciate it um, I enjoy sharing my crafting with everyone and let's get started. So for the first part of this video, I'm going to show you how I made these decorative pins. This is a little needle jar that I made for a retreat I went to in May. I made one of these for each of the attendees, there were only eight of us. Um, and this is a salt shaker and when your needles will break or wear out you can put them in here and when this gets full then you can find a way to dispose of the needles and I just thought it was cute to put these decorative pins inside and they can be the decorative pins can be just decorative pins you can put them in a pin cushion or a, a pin drum or whatever you want to put them in um, or something like this or they can be counting pins for your cross stitch so I'll show you the different kinds of pins that I've used. Um, when I made those, I used these pins that I bought from Amazon, and I'll link these below. I don't think they came in these cases, but I don't remember for sure. So there was, there's four different kinds, and I should have already had one of each out. Oh, I do have that one out. Should have already had one of each out to show you. Um, these are stainless steel. And I also, I think I've also used them for um, glue toppers when I was doing paper crafting. So there's all these, these four different kinds that all come together um, in separate, separate packaging. And I can't remember if it was this or not. I have a bunch of these little containers, like this size and this size, that came from Amazon. And so I can't remember. But so that is the kinds of pins I used for those. So I'll show you how I made those. They're very, very simple. All you need, get my all you need is the pins and some beads. And I have a ton of beads because I've been a jewelry maker forever and I've been collecting beads forever. And then I use E6000 glue to hold them. Um, I did forget one thing. So I've already done some of the work and I, um, went through all my beads and found the ones I want to put together. So here's the first one. And this is with the pink decorative pin. And I just have these two little beads I'm going to put on there. These that I put in here I made really simple. You don't want them to overshadow whatever you're making. And you want to leave enough pin, if you're using it for a counting pin, you want to leave enough pin to put through your fabric. So to make this, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue right there. And I'm going to put this bead on. And then I'm going to put hopefully a smaller amount of glue. You could use a toothpick. That might be a better way to put this on when you only want a little tiny bit. I didn't get out my toothpicks, but they are in the drawer right next to me. So that's all there is to it. I need to let that glue dry. I want it to be upside down so the beads don't slip. I think if I just leave it in here it'll be fine. 
just leave it like this. So I'll set that one aside. Ah. And then I'll do this one. This is a pretty purple bead with a tiny little spacer bead is all I've put on there. A little bit of glue. E6000 glue, no matter what you're doing with it, you need to let it set overnight. You might It might feel like it's set up within a short period of time, but um, you really need to let it set overnight so it can totally cure. I'm going to get a toothpick. I'm going to try the toothpick trick that I just told you. Because that's a tiny little spacer and I don't want to get too much glue on there. I'll put on my little spacer. This stuff is all tiny and fiddly and probably hard to see. So this is this one. I'll leave it. I'm going to put it in this other little tray there. These cute little trays are perfect for this and they came from Chot Couture which is um, it's a direct sales company that is you make some fun stuff with chalk paint and um, they call them what do they call them they call them templates they're stencils really so there's that one and then this is the last one of those three this is the it's kind of hard to see the one with the clear head I don't really like this pin but I need to use them. I need to use them up or get rid of them, one of the two. So we'll see. I'm going to make this one and then see how I feel. If I want to use any of the rest or if they're going to go. I'm in the process of purging my craft area. So we'll see. They might go bye-bye. I don't think I really like them. that one. Oh, you can see it better on the white. I'm hoping the light's okay. I've got extra lights all around me, but I'm having to film at night, so. And then, there are some different kinds of pins that you can use. So I have these, these packages of pins. Uh, this one came separate. These are the longest ones, and I kind of like these the best. And then these, you had to get all three colors together. I didn't want all three colors. I'm really not a gold person. I'm okay with this color, but I like the silver. So I'll show you these. These are like a... What do they call them? They just call them a metal stick pin. And they come with a little thing for the bottom. So they're good for like corsages or hat pins. And then this has... Tiny little ball on the top, if you can see that, which adds a little decoration. And then these other three come in gold and silver, and gold and silver, and it doesn't say, I am going to say bronze. And this is what they look like, and they have an eye in the top. So the eye lets you do fun things with them. So first I'll show you the two bigger one, uh, the one bigger one. So I've gone through and pulled out beads and this is what I decided to do with this one. So I'm starting with the big bead. See if I can remember the order I had for this. And I'm going to put this on. And then I'm going to put, because I'm layering a few beads on here, I'm going to go ahead and put the glue on this way. And I think the next thing I did was this. I should have had them laid out in a way that I would remember what I did. So that's those two. And then I did this tiny little greenish one. It's very pale. 
think it's like a jade color. And then I'm going to do a bead cap. I have a bunch of bead caps. Like I said, I've been doing jewelry for a long time. So tiny, these are tiny, tiny little bead caps. I have all different shapes and sizes. And you can get all of this, all of these findings. This is what this stuff is called. The bead caps and the chain and the all the other stuff. They're called findings. And you can get these at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Joann's. Um, you can also get them online. I buy a lot of this stuff. I bought a lot of the bead caps, all different shapes and sizes, on Amazon quite a while ago. So I have a huge selection. So there is that one. this on so I don't lose it and also when you're giving it as a decorative pan it's nice to have a little thing on the end to protect it and now the others we're gonna go just a tiny bit more complicated I'll do this one first I have this pretty heart I'm gonna do a dangle on this so because these have eyes on the top um, so I'm just putting these two beads on the pin, and this is going to be a little dangle with chain. So if I pick that up, jeepers. Sometimes it's hard to pick things up. So put this heart on here. And then I'm going to put a little bit more than I would because I want it to be on the bottom of this bead too. I want that bead to stay there. And if you get too much glue, you can wipe it off. Like I think that's too much glue. Yeah, I got a big glob there. So I'll get a paper towel. Paper towel and just wipe off some of it. Now to add the chain, I need a jump ring. I have several different kinds of jump rings. These are multicolored, which I'll need for those others. These are all silver, and these came from Amazon. These little containers come apart like this. If I can get it back together. And then it, they open individually. And I think I want... Maybe I will take them apart because the others are in my way. This is the way it opens. There we go. So I need two of those. And I need two pairs of needle nose pliers. So the first thing to do is to take one of these little jump rings Find the opening, which is going to be kind of hard to see, I think. I don't know if you can see that or not. There's a little slit. I put put it in my one side. I've done this for a while. I'm out of practice. And then you're going to turn it. You're not, you don't ever want to pull it, you want to turn it. Because if you pull it, you'll never get it back together. And I'm going to put on my chain. I have a tiny little piece of chain. I can get that on there. I need to find one of the ends of this tiny little piece of chain. Okay, fine. So I can't get it close enough to my face. That's why I'm having trouble, I think. I didn't get the end. There. So that's hanging on there. And then I'm going to put this pin on there. And normally I would wait for this to be dry. Or I would do this part first. Uh... on here. Oh. 
again fiddly sorry I bumped the bumped my thing this is not cooperating with me so I would say in the future I should definitely do that ahead of time and then you take this and you bring it back so it should be in theory should be all flat there should not be a space because you don't want it to fall apart and my stuff is all moved and now the other part should be a little easier because my pin shouldn't be in my way so I'll take this little jump ring and do this and do this yeah you can see I'm going to do this fast so I don't lose my stuff and then Okay, so you have this cute little dangle on this pin. This is a pretty little butterfly. Kind of hard to see. So I will put this on here. And I will leave, push all that down. I'll leave that to dry. Now I'll do the gold one. And I think I am going to do the dangle part first, now that I've figured that out. So for this one, I need gold jump rings. <clears throat> and I only have one choice for size, so it looks like it's the same size. Sorry, I took a drink of water and I swallowed wrong, which I quite often do. So there is that. Where? There it is. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, I'm going to put this on here, I'm going to put the chain on here, wait, yeah, I'll do it this way, so i got to get the end of my chain, close this jump ring, close it, close it. I think it's good. <clears throat> and then I'm going to put to get the other jump ring. And put the chain on it. Sorry, my eyes are burning. It happens to me at night. And put this on there. So there's my dangle already on there, and that is a cute little gold pair of scissors. It's a charm. I have all different kinds of charms. I really like buying charms. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing on here. Put my glue, put my bead, and then I want my toothpick.
should not leave my glue open that long. I'll probably be sorry. You can buy E6000. You get four of these tiny little tubes or one big tube, and I find the tiny little tubes much easier to work with. This is a tiny little spacer bead. It's a heart-shaped gold spacer bead. And it just goes nice on the bottom of that. And then there is that one. And then the last one of these three is the bronze one. So again, I need a bronze colored spacer bead. I think it's these guys. These are tinier, I think. But that's okay. That's what I have to do. Um, take the spacer bead and needle nose. Some people can do this with their fingernails. My fingernails are so soft. If I did anything like that, it would just tear them to pieces. So that's why I use two sets of needle nose pliers. There's that part. Take the other Space bead and find the break in it. I think it's right there. These are hard to tell. They're closed really nicely. Chain, and this is another pair of scissors. This is stork scissors. They're a little bigger than I wanted, but I don't have didn't have another charm that was this color that was small enough so I had to use this one. So there's my dangle and now I will, yeah I did leave that lid off too long, I'm going to be sorry. This bead, I think, came from Michael's. They have a bunch of these kinds of beads. Well, Joanne's does too. So actually, I don't really know. That's a good question. But the flat beads are kind of fun. As long as they have a hole in the middle. This is just a little yellow bicone bead or gold-colored bicone bead. So there is that one. Put you that oh, I should try to clean this. It's all goobered. So I should clean it off before I put the lid on. There. Now the last thing I'm going to show you is if you want to do a dangle but you have a bead like this that does not have an eyelet in it. You can still do it. All you're going to do is put the chain on the bead before you put or on the pin before you do the rest. So I'm going to see how long do I want this. I haven't cut this one yet. See, I just have a little heart. I think I want it this long. And I've got to cover this, otherwise it's going to shoot. I had to go hunting for the last one that I cut. So I just have a little piece of chain on there. And again, I need... need where did they go? I need silver... This time I only need one of these because I used the chain for one side. So I don't need a mm, jump ring for the other side. Oh, 
Oh, I was covering it up. Okay. So I'm going to put my... Actually, never mind. Chain. This is a cute little heart. Put the heart down there. Close my jump ring. And then I'm going to make my pin. Put the beads on my pin. And the beads are what is going to hold the chain in place. The chain won't move. It won't swivel around anymore once I do this. Because it's going to be glued down with this bead. This first bead I put on there. And I got a big glob. So, get the glob off of there. And what was I doing with this one? This one I need a bee cap. And then I'm putting on a bicone bead. That's what this little green one is right here. And then This green bead. I noticed I talk, talk lower when I'm... It's almost like I'm talking to myself. I think that's why I do that. I talk to myself a lot when I'm doing things like this. I didn't really get any out. Because my... Try that again. This on there, this on the end, and so there we have our little dangle on our pin. So that's fun. So those are the, that's how I make my stick pins, uh, counting pins, decorative pins whatever you want to call them. Um, they're a lot of fun to make. Like you saw how quick these go. There's only a couple on each pin. And they make really nice gifts. You can package these. Um, you could do something like this with them. Where you make a little piece of cardstock to put them on. And um, if you don't have, if you have pins like these that don't have the ends, these ends for them, you can do something like this, which is kind of ugly, but this is a pencil eraser from a mechanical pencil. Or I couldn't, didn't get them out. I don't, couldn't find them. I have little um, rubber, they're clear rubber earring backs, and you can put those on there too to protect the tip um, so they don't get stuck. But if you're putting them in something like this, you don't need to do that. But if you're going to give them as like a wrapped gift thing, then you probably would. So that is my counting pins and decorative pins. I apologize for bumping the video. And I'll see you in the next section. Another thing that I've done with beads is what I call a pokey tool or a paper piercing tool. And these are some of the ones I've made in the past. And if you're a paper crafter, this can be used for piercing paper. But also, since I've started sewing, making project bags and stuff, and doing a little bit of quilting, um, there is a tool that Biani has that's called a stylus tool, and it's a pointy thing, and you can use it to help run your, hold your stuff down as it goes through the sewing machine. So these are three that I've made in the past. Um, I've made a bunch more and I gave them as gifts. It's been a couple of years since I made these. And it's made the same way as the pins that I just made, but it's made on this, which is from uh, Hobby Lobby. 
and this is called a stainless steel scribe pin. They come in a package of two. This one is made using, I should have got this out, a turkey baster, turkey lacer piece. And as you can see, they're kind of open and you have to actually close the end, which can be a little tricky. So if you want a smaller one, you could do, do that. Um, for a while, Hobby Lobby didn't have these, and so I didn't have a choice. This particular one right here, these are mostly wooden beads, and they are made, it is made with this. These come from Amazon, and I bought these for making wooden garlands, but I was sitting looking at them, and I thought they'd be perfect for making one of these, so that's really festive, and I've got a little heart charm on the end of that one. So we're going to make this one together. They come with, um, do they come with both? This has a thing on the, t the end, like I was talking about earlier. Didn't realize that, because the other one I took out didn't have that. And then it's got this thing that'll hold the beads on while the glue is drying. Or, if you don't want to glue them, you don't have to, you can just put that on there. So here is my beads. This one's going to be purple, because this is for me. All the ones that I ever made, I never made one for myself. And I'm going to first lay it out so I can see if I can remember how I had it. These guys go on the end. Let's see. These caps go with this. And so that this is actually a bead. I have a bunch of a whole bunch of these I made 30, 30 some years ago. This is made with um, female clay and I made a necklace and I had taken it apart and I wanted to use these beads for other things and I have this little spacer on each end and where did I put this so I'm gonna just start putting the stuff on and see if I remember where that one piece goes Let's see if I can remember like does it go so same thing I'm using E6000 glue. These, if you use this kind, um, these are thicker, so you have to find beads with bigger holes. Not all of my beads will work for this. A lot of the beads I used on the stick pins, or stick pins, uh, decorative pins will not work for this because their holes are too small. And then I'm going to put this one, oh, a little more glue. This one on. And do I have this next? So go there. It doesn't really matter where I put it. I think I had that next. I should have left them laid out the way that I wanted them. This little tiny bead cap. Yeah, I don't think that was the way I had it. But it's still going to be pretty. These are little um, porcelain beads that look like they're painted. So it goes there. And again, I have too much, too much glue. So I'm going to get rid of some of it. It's not so goopy. a little bit and this and then a tiny little bit well a little bit bigger than a tiny little bit for this one this one here I might have had the spacer right there. I can't remember where that spacer was. So I wanted a purple one and I started with this bead and then found other beads that I liked to go with it.
this one. Swirl that around some so everything sticks. And then one of these guys. Sorry, I just realized I'm like letting myself whisper again. More like I'm talking to myself than to a video. It's not where I had that. But it's too late now. I have glue on everything. I don't want to try to take it apart. That's too much glue. Okay, and then done with the glue. I'm going to put this on to hold it while I put the dangle on the other end. I don't want to leave that on there because it will glue it on there. But So the dangle I have, I have these really cute little purse beads. I don't remember where I got them. A couple of years ago I was buying all kinds of beads everywhere. and. I don't remember where most of them came from. So first I'm going to do this. On my chain. On my bead. It's not really a bead. But it works like one. And then I'm going to take this one. I have glue on my fingers. I just did my nails and I was thinking while I was working on this, I think E6000 glue eats nail polish, so I might be sorry. Might be. And there is that one. Isn't that pretty? This one is for me. And I think it's beautiful. Love the little purse. I could have made that chain smaller, but um, I have lots of boxes of big beads. And they almost all have big holes. Uh, let's see. These guys. But I, I like to make them just with one pretty big bead. Um in the center and try to taper them going out. These only come in one size, so I could have dug around and probably found some small ones somewhere else in my stash, but I didn't do that. So these are what I call, in the paper crafting world, it's the technical term is a paper piercing tool. Everybody calls them a pokey tool. So that is that one. So that was it. I hope you enjoyed watching how I made all of these different kinds of pins. Um, these three have dangles and it's the kind of pin that I used. This one has a dangle and it I showed you how to do it without having a pin that has a loop on the top. And these come with a loop on the top so I had to put dangles on them. You could put a lot more on there. I like to just have it simple but you could have a really chunky kind of a dangle. So thank you so much for watching. Um, please let me know in the comments below if there are other uh, kinds of tutorials you would like to see, mostly related to cross stitch. I do have a lot of tutorials already on my website uh, or on my channel about um, different kinds of paper crafting. And I think that's it for today. So thank you so much for watching and happy crafting.